Hello everybody and welcome back to You Can't Win. This is Tom here and I'm joined by Don as usual. Today we are going to do a traditional uh, Q&A episode. So I've gone through the Curious Cat and pulled up a bunch of questions that you guys have been sending us in. Uh, so let's just dive right into it. Sure. Uh, all right. So the first one says, do beets really lack a ton of traditional value? I've been eating a lot of them in Brussels sprouts lately and feel great. Uh so I did, I thought beets were good for you. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I don't know at all. I don't I don't know. I I I for some reason uh, I thought potatoes were like really bad for you. Like I thought it was like one of the worst things you could eat. I don't know why. I guess cuz they were just like carbs and stuff. I don't know. But yeah, I mean I heard... it's probably not it's not a, like yeah. There's not just not much going on there. Sure. It's just carbs, yeah. But a dietitian was like you should probably she's like those are probably better than what else you would be eating or something like that, I guess kind of thing. So I'm not yeah, sure. yeah, it's probably better than like anything like processed, you know, sure. like like uh, that kind of sugary stuff or whatever. Yeah, so I don't know about beets, but yeah, I feel like if you're feeling good, then keep doing it. Yeah, sure. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so let's just move on. Um, how will the Islamo Catholic Socialist Caliphate hmm, sneaking in a word into that one that I don't <laughs> like? <laughs> Uh, so how will they exterminate the white race? If it doesn't exterminate the white race, you can count me out. Um, uh, I don't know. Any ideas on this one, Don? Um, I, I feel like the, you know, I don't know. The, the white race would just die out naturally kind of time. But, it, you know, I don't think that would mean that, like, racism will go away. It'll be like, you know, because look at, like, Brazil, you know, where, like, yeah. there's, like, racism about, like, all different types of shades and, like, combinations and stuff. So, mm-hmm. uh um i don't know i uh there's a lot of weird stuff that happened in the 90s and early 2000s around this kind of stuff around like groups like talking about like being race traitors and all this kind of stuff but like in like a sympathetic way being like we gotta like destroy the whiteness and and stuff and yeah yeah. you know you get get really weird places with it but uh i can kind of understand why if like you're you know i i get like the why people would it's like you know they're they're so concerned with the politics of like certain things like police repression and stuff that they kind of take it into a weird place but that's why i always say like anything identity politics you know if you're around like a seven or an eight out of ten on it that's pretty good you know like if you know you can you can if you want to you can kind of live around there anytime you take it to about a ten just you just start to get into literally weird places so Mm -hmm. you don't want to do that you don't want to like talk about how you want to kill your whiteness in yourself or something like that that's not i don't know that gets weird right yeah, I, I have always thought of it not like as a, you know, the the, the uh, Islamo-Catholic caliphate, not as being as something to exterminate their white race, but to, to, uh, to for the white race to transcend through it, you know, to the next stage of evolution so sure. that we all become star children or something. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so kind of as a follow-up to that, someone, I don't know if it's the same person, but it says Finnish people should be exterminated. So, uh, I don't, you know, there's a lot of, like, anti-finicism out there, and uh, this is just another example of it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you guys can go ahead and try. The Russians have tried for a long time. The Swedish tried. And, uh, yeah, have at it. See how it goes for you. Mm-hmm. I always like that, like, Finlandization, whatever. Like, the, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Like yeah, where, yeah. I've heard of that. I don't really know what it means. Uh, it was this idea that, like... Uh, Finland during the Cold War was sort of neutralized. They thought by Soviet people to be like sort of neutral slash uh, sort of sympathetic towards the Soviet Union, like not not actively fighting the Cold War against them or something like that. So a lot of yeah. people like in the West and stuff, um, like a lot of the anti-communist like people uh, thought of countries like Finland as like uh, almost like the worst possible outcome in the Cold War because it was like you know, they would talk about like how, you know, countries were going to be Finlandized kind of thing to become neutral. And they thought of it more as almost like a client state kind of thing, not client, but like, you know, like not standing in the way of Soviet domination kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I don't know that we'll have to have an equivalent for the Islamo Catholic uh, socialist uh, empire um, where we, uh, you know, we, we kind of like turn countries like Mexico or something like that into uh neutral slash client states so yeah yeah M- mexicanization or something <laughs> sounds funny though <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah uh i i kind of like like the uh stance that finland took during the cold war i felt like it was pretty good for finland and also wasn't really 
you know, it wasn't like feeding into any of the uh, imperialism or social imperialism or whatever on either side. You know, it was like they were, they were you know, like a capitalist country, um, highly social, uh, you know, social democratic compared to like the U.S. or something. Yeah. Uh, like a lot of European countries, but also did a lot of trade with the Soviets and, uh, you know, I felt like it was a pretty good arrangement. It was, yeah. you know, Finland is a small country, so... They're not really in a position to like bully people around, so it kind of made sense to be like, "Yeah, we're just going to do what's good for us, and uh, don't really want to play this game you guys are doing." Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Anyway, I think I think that's a good outcome because then they could have just uh, pretended to be neutral until such time as uh, invasion of uh, um, West Germany kind of switched <laughs> and and uh, yeah allied themselves openly with the soviets and stuff that would have been cool so <laughs> sure yeah I, that would have been uh, i don't know that would have been going back to like the old ways of uh, sending the Finns into europe to just massacre a bunch of people yeah yeah, yeah. uh yeah i think we would have had fun with that sure uh all right so let's let's keep going here um this one's a little crude it says don has a decent sized penis tom has a tiny one that's what it feels like at least i don't know uh, so yeah i don't not... know we won't we're not yeah, gonna, go ahead. We're not going to be comparing ourselves on here. I don't know. That's what we do intellectually. So <laughs> <laughs> physically, yeah. No. Yeah. I don't know. I, I've seen a few comments like that saying that I have like small dick energy and all this kind of stuff. I don't really get where that's coming from. Uh, you know, it's whatever. Sure. I, I feel like this is uh, people that don't like something I've said and then they're like, oh, that Tom. He's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. It's also people people think that you're obese. Well, that was like a rolling joke with the uh, Goatstein and stuff. So yeah, yeah, I mean, it's slowly becoming a reality. <laughs> oh yeah, know. yeah. In lockdown, <laughs> a thousand year yeah. lockdown. Is... Yeah, I'm about as as fat as I've ever been right now. Oh well, not that I'm like I'm, I'm still not. I wouldn't call myself fat, but it's uh, I don't, I'm also getting older, you know. So I think sure. that's part of it too. Yeah, but yeah. All right, let's keep going. Um, any advice on how to ascend from being a kissless, handholdless virgin? So this is some uh, 4chan vocabulary here, I think, the KHV. Um, yeah, just I, I, I would just give my normal advice for this, which is uh, um, they're more afraid of you than you are of them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, I, I read that um, there's a subreddit called green text which is like screenshots of uh 4chan and like the little kind of funny little posts and stories that people tell on there so you can kind of enjoy that without being subjected to a lot of the other stuff that gets posted on 4chan yeah and uh there's a lot of different things like kind of along this line of like these people who uh whether they're fake stories or not i mean a lot of them are fake but they're still pretty amusing but it's like people being in some kind of scenario where a girl like uh you know is expressing interest or whatever and they kind of screw it up and then they like oh damn it my autism or whatever that kind of thing yeah yeah so that's kind of where my mind went on this like i think a lot of people i mean i've i've been in situations like that too where uh, like i remember one time in college uh, I got in an elevator with like a, just a big mob of my friends. I was with like 10 people or something. And this girl steps in and like she was like trying to strike up a conversation with me. And just because there was like, I don't know, it was kind of a weird situation. Like we were all crammed into an elevator and like all my friends were there just kind of like staring at us, you know, like they were just there. Uh, it felt kind of awkward. So I didn't really play it off really well i kind of like not exactly ignored her but sort of like just didn't let it go anywhere yeah and afterwards they were all like what what were you doing she was into you did it, all this kind of stuff and uh so i feel like uh you got to get a few of those out of your system you know so yeah. that especially when you're younger you know that's that's going to happen and you just don't want to uh, dwell on it and let it become like some thing that just haunts you forever and you know sabotages you for the future so yeah you got to work through that, and then at some point it'll just kind of uh, come naturally, you know? Sure. Uh, all right, so the next one. Uh, could pornography ever be somehow reinvented or regulated or reformulated to become unambiguously a moral good like other types of art can be? Um, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's just, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a very strange, weird industry right now. Um, in terms of like especially just how big it is like if you look at how many like billions of dollars it is and all this kind of stuff all of it um, yeah it's like as big as the uh you know the normal movie industry you know it's yeah crazy. yeah it's it's uh so 
I, I, I feel like uh, it's very easy to, I don't know, it's, it's one of those things where people kind of fight back and forth and stuff, but uh, I don't know. Like, I, I, I always think for some of this, I'm not going to be the one that, like, solves this problem or issue or figures out what the right exact thing on it is. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not really sure what to do about that because, I don't know, I, I feel like uh, if there is harm, it's probably one of those things where it's like, uh, for a small percentage, it might be... Uh, very harmful but for most people it'd be just be if there is harm it's probably just like a small overall degradation of relationships and stuff like that like in i mean in terms of like social you know like it's like uh the the fact like the the emphasis that it gets um as like a overwhelming negative does seem a bit weird to me but that's just like i don't know i can't like I can't look into someone's soul or something like that and, and determine whether or not that's really the case. But you see a lot of this stuff online, like in religious kind of groups and stuff where it's like a very, very big thing that like priests talk to people about kind of thing. Like it's like a, yeah, they always it's a say big it's a big thing like, in the Muslim community too. They yeah. always say it's like one of the most troubling kind of things. And I don't know, you know, again, one of those things where if that's, if that's the way that people are perceiving it, then that's the way they're perceiving it. I can't like be like, well, you're wrong for, obsessing about right. it or something yeah. like that but you like, kind of have your own own position yeah. on it and that's all it can be right sure yeah so but uh yeah and i i think it is true obviously that like a lot of the groups that are like kind of pushing uh you know like th- there's a lot of groups that are like obviously it, it's it's just any sort of it, it's like a culture war thing for them even though that they might kind of frame it otherwise or something like that it's kind of a a way of uh fighting back but i don't know there's a lot of weird stuff going on in the industry in lots of ways and stuff and not, not just even like in the like in in the sort of open more public industry but like i don't know i, I can't remember where I, where I was hearing it but it was something like uh they were talking about like korean whatsapp groups or something like that or something like just different groups that have like uh um like basically like revenge porn child pornography or something like that where it's just like what? They, they're talking Jesus. about like uh where where they like entrap people into it kind of thing you know and uh and then they were saying that like hundreds of thousands of people were members of these groups and stuff at, at one time or another kind of thing it's like like it's just there's so much out there now that just is like it's the kind of stuff that like you would like any reasonable person would be like oh yeah that just shouldn't be on the internet is like now pervasive or something like that so and it gets into yeah. weird things with like you know like uh you know they're they're talking about apple i don't know if you heard this but apple was saying but like how they might basically like scan phones to see if there's uh, illegal material on them and uh, oh yeah i think it was something basically like uh, my guess is it's going to be something like icloud or something like that they'll just make sure that people don't have you know like i'm sure that there's like a basic kind of like stock of uh child pornography or something like that where it's like you know they it's all flagged or whatever kind of thing so they could just look right. on the phones to see if it's like that that's that yeah but like it's uh, not like they just control f <laughs> kitty yeah. porn dot mpg yeah yeah but i mean that like it's not like uh it's not necessarily that like people would get uh in trouble for like marginal stuff that they're gonna go looking around for kind of thing it's more like if they have like this basic kind of set of stuff or whatever you know like and uh anyways that's the way it is. but you know you got to think that like that's not really a good precedent in its own way because it's like you know could they do that for uh pirated movies could they do that for you know like i don't know like you know what i mean like, yeah or anything like, or anything or it could become yeah. like a political thing like they yeah. start to consider something like some sort of terroristic material i mean like you see it in china right like yeah. they consider all kinds of like like the Quran is like something you're not supposed to have as a Uyghur or whatever. Like, I don't know, not a, not a good precedent. So I don't know. It's one of those things where, yeah, it's just, it's, it's difficult to uh, wade through the issues and it's not, it's not always fun to do so. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. 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 I'm a little bit further on the, uh, just like, I don't know, the anti porn side of this, I guess yeah. I'm, I'm further down that spectrum than you. It sounds like uh, I'd be totally, pleased if they just banned it i don't think it has really any redeeming qualities i think it's it's pretty just a bad thing and uh you know but that's just my opinion so that's that, what for whatever that's worth I, I don't feel very strongly about it but i i don't know it's weird to have like an opinion that is kind of like extreme in comparison to the mainstream i guess but then also yeah. like not really care too much if that is what happens with it but that's how i would handle it personally um to me like just to go back to the question um 
can it become somehow like a moral good like other types of art i sort of feel like if it does that it's not pornography anymore like it, that's almost a definitional thing like if it's pornography it's just a, it is the thing that is not a moral good like it's not artistic it has like sure. this kind of functional purpose you know uh so i don't know yeah and uh, i mean I, I I get like yeah I get like people are saying well it's never going to be completely illegal and stuff like that and like you know so there's and you have to kind of protect performers in different ways and stuff but uh, the scope of it is just amazing now to me that uh, like how much of not not just uh, pornography in like sort of its straightforward way but also like all the adjacent stuff kind of stuff you know like yeah the the creep like porn creep or something if yeah. you want to give it a term is what kind of bothers me like it feels like just music and movies and TV. You even see it in like cartoons and stuff, especially like stuff that gets on Netflix for, I don't know who's in charge of that stuff, but it's kind of weird. Uh, it just gets more and more like sexualized and it, it's just odd. I don't know. The politics around it are weird because it feels like everybody has an incoherent position. Yeah. You know, like leftists are supposed to be against sexual exploitation, but then they're also like really pro all this stuff. And then the right is, I mean, I, I don't know. They have all these like blonde bimbos pushing their stuff and everything. And then at the same time, they're supposed to be like the trad anti like sexualization squad. You know, I don't know. Yeah. It's, yeah. It just feels like one of those things we don't really have figured out very well. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's, let's keep going. Um, Pop sensation Rihanna and her beauty product line have recently come under fire for using mica mined by slave labor on the hell planet of Jharkhand of the Indian Star Empire. But what are the <laughs> chances the Naxalites are the ones running these mines? Oh, I don't know. Uh, probably, <laughs> probably not that great. I don't know. Uh, I feel like if it's a mine, then it means that it has uh, a lot of uh, security that's being paid for with the uh, and. Uh, that are not related to uh, the Noxals. But although in might... India, it's probably just a guy in a khaki uniform with a whip, you know, just <laughs> wandering around with a big pot belly. That's that's yeah. what Indian security tends to look like. No, I mean that like, you know, when they, they hire all those like they just pay people like and just give them clubs basically and are like beat up anyone that looks Maoist and stuff like that, that yeah. kind of stuff. So um, I don't know. And uh, yeah, I, I feel like uh, yeah, they're not I don't know if how much of their their taking the cream off the top of uh, mining operations at this point they don't i don't know i don't know how successful they are in that regard yeah I w the question is phrased a little bit oddly i'm not sure what their intentions were here but like saying but what are the chances the naxalites are the ones running their these mines are they trying to say like that would make it okay then yeah. or something yeah i don't know yeah they are. yeah yeah although yeah I, I wouldn't agree with that Plus, uh, Rihanna played a, mil a U.S. military person in the movie Battleship, I believe. Um, so <laughs> I, I think that they that made that movie. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so that movie is. Uh, have you, you have you seen that or no? Is, you, I have, haven't seen it. No. Okay, so um, it's. Uh, it, I think I think I think it's like Liam Neeson's in it or something like that. And uh, um, uh, so what ends up happening in it is so it's Battleship. It's based on the board game, right? Like the little. Like yeah. The, yeah. Okay. And this is weird. Um, yeah. And uh, so in it, um, the battleships uh, are fighting an alien. <laughs> it just okay. Which doesn't make sense. So, anyway, just nothing to do with the game whatsoever. Really, it's just like you know you're fighting this alien thing. And uh, anyways, uh, um, the the climax of the movie is that they have this old battleship that's like in mothballs kind of thing at a port, like just a museum basically um, in San Francisco or Hawaii or something like that. You know, one of those big ports and uh, they uh, to fight the, Oh, it, it's like, yeah, I guess it's near uh, Pearl Harbor or something like that. And to fight the alien in time, because they have to like, I don't know, there's some reason why it's like time sensitive or something like that. Uh, they have to take the ship out of mothballs and uh, the only crew they have are like the old, veterans that were there for like a navy week thing or something like that kind of thing so it's all these like really really old guys uh like refitting tim the ship. allen <laughs> tim <laughs> but, allen's the admiral <laughs> and uh, and uh, just these guys in beards and stuff that are like they all look like 80 years old or whatever because right? uh, they're supposed to be like they're supposed to be world war ii vets or something like that or korean or whatever and uh and uh this whole like sequence of them like getting the ship ready to go destroy the aliens uh is like i think it's like thunderstruck like acdc just blaring and uh or something like that like one of the one of those uh acdc anthems and it's just uh 
I don't know. It, it, I was so happy when I was watching it in theaters. It was just like the dumbest thing possible. And I was just Yeah, like... that sounds like a thing you'd write. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it was like so it's good. A joke. It was so good. And then, uh, yeah, and then they, you know, go defeat the alien or whatever. And, uh, and it, like, just, there's so many, like, it's just, it's just, I don't know. And I think Rihanna is in it as, like, a gunner or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. So, I don't know. Um, anyway. All so. right. So, pros and cons to Rihanna's success, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Slave well, because, labor, but also pretty well, funny movies. Because, because she was in that, I mean, she's obviously, you know, pro-American. So, she wouldn't be pro-Naxalite. So, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Unless she's playing the long game here or something. Uh, all right, so the next question is, would agree that this is a gay with God pod? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah happy with God, right? Yeah, that's yep. us. A queer interfaith podcast, yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. Uh, so this question is for Don. Are you looking for a wife? Um, yeah, that's a long-term goal. I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. Yeah, so if, I would say if you're looking for a husband, then... You know, DMs are open, right, Don? <laughs> sure. Cool. Um, so is there a difference between rules like don't commit blasphemy and don't hit people in the face with claw hammers? What is it? Uh, uh, hmm. Well, one is very specific. <laughs> I, I guess there it sort of is. In, like, don't commit blasphemy is kind of like a multifaceted type of a don't thing and it gets kind of nuanced don't hit people in the face with claw hammers is not that's like very obvious and it's just like don't don't do this very particular behavior uh don't commit blasphemy it's not like there's not one single thing that that's trying to stop and it's not like there's a super obvious uh like social good there in this in the same sense of, of like just injuring somebody you know yeah, I, I was reading a bit about like uh, this the other day. I can't remember where, but it was like uh, you know, one is wrong in themselves, and one is wrong because it's like a social yeah to or something. Like that one is wrong, and I think that's probably part of it. Is that like certain laws are like you know just uh, they're they're seen as like a, it's more like a philosophical thing. It's like you know everyone would agree maybe that claw mm-hmm. hammering the face is bad, but then blasphemy is more depends on it's it's like social context i'm not sure right. if that dichotomy actually exists but that's what i was reading so yeah no that that makes sense to me I, I think there's also a difference in maybe this is sort of even the same thing but like a sin is a is something against yourself really like it could also be combined with something against other people or against the community or whatever but uh the the real evil there is is what you're doing to your own soul um Hitting someone in the face with a claw hammer, it, I mean, there is some harm you're doing to yourself by doing that, but really the purpose of that rule is to prevent people from being injured that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, the blaspheming is not like we're trying to protect God from blasphemy, right? Like that's more about um, protecting ourselves from, you know, from, from uh, harming harming our own souls, you know? So, sure. Yeah, I, I guess that's kind of pretty similar to what you were saying. Mm-hmm. All right, so the next one is, is it more sinful to do something really bad because you can't tell right from wrong? For instance, you put the puppy in the microwave to dry him after a bath. Oh, we've all been there. Or to have hateful, violent thoughts but never act on them out of cowardice. So more sinful to do something bad out of ignorance? Or is it more sinful to have evil thoughts but not act on them because of cowardice? Um, yeah, I think, I think having the evil thoughts is probably worse because, uh, um, people make mistakes all the time. That's not necessarily, I don't know. It, it's, it's more, yeah. Like what, what you're, I, I, I mean, I guess because it's a puppy, it's hard to, because, well, maybe in my mind, it's not as bad as like, you know, manslaughter or something like that kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's like, it's still a, an animal at something. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, uh, so I get it's, your point. It's more like a mistake kind of thing, and uh, yeah. it's a bad mistake, but like you didn't know. I, I guess it. I guess it depends on how much care you took to understand the situation. Yeah. Like if you're like being ignorant because you're just not thinking it through and not doing the work and stuff to figure out how you should dry a dog or something, um, and that that would not involve a microwave. Yeah, no. <laughs> Imagine you're like fighting against people trying to just you know, yeah, just yeah. towel them off like, no, this is better. I want to do yeah, it this yeah. way. Yeah. But like, uh, so I think that would depend. Like, where does your ignorance come from? And yeah, that yeah. would probably matter. But yeah. that, that would be the sin, I guess, really. Yeah. I think uh, under Sharia, neither of these things are actually sinful. 
I think if you do something out of ignorance, maybe it's still sinful, but it's forgiven. Yeah. And to have evil thoughts but not act on them is actually you were that's a um you you're rewarded for that oh yeah that's interesting uh the thing here is that it says out of cowardice which means you're not it's not that you're not acting on them because you know it's wrong to do that you're not acting on them because you're just scared to do it so maybe that isn't rewarded so maybe that is the more sinful one um, by the logic of sharia so i if, if that's the case i guess i would go with that sure but whatever, you know, whatever keeps you from doing bad things is fine, I guess, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. So next one is, you know how you can fight the actual satanic pedophile conspiracies that are the United States imperialist bourgeoisie by conspiring to fight to reconstitute clandestine militarized parties under the guidance of Chairman Gonzalo's works to scientifically organize poverty and the poor to wage war against their class enemies who might as well be another alien species of such a disgusting and perverse life they live. Yeah. So Chairman Gonzalo died recently. Um, yeah, he did, huh? Yeah. And uh, um, I don't know. I uh, There is a small group in Toronto that actually like is like a partisan of his kind of thing. Like they, they support his line or something. Um, they support like a militarized communist party and stuff. It's a bit, it's a bit, you know, obviously a bit silly because it's like probably not going to do it. And if they do, then they're just probably going to go to jail. But like, um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. He, uh, it, it was, it was, uh, it, it's kind of, I don't know. It's, it, it yeah, it, it was a long time coming, I guess, kind of thing for him. So, um, you know, like, uh, that was what Jackman's kind of take on it was like, the, let's turn the page now kind of thing. Like, let's, because obviously like, a lot of people on the left in Peru don't like him, kind of thing. So, because of all the murders and whatnot. But like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I uh, I never really got into reading a lot of his stuff, kind of thing, because I, I I think I, that was like at the point where I kind of gave up on a lot of it. Was just uh, starting to get into like, I don't know, like all the different uh, Latin American Maoisms and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, kind of as a follow up, the next question is sort of related here. Uh, why Donald's next religion isn't Marxism, Leninism, Maoism, principally Maoism, following the contributions of universal validity of Chairman Gonzalo, adapted to Canadian reality as a guiding thought and great leadership in formation? Both of these questions are just full of like mushy brain jargon to me. Like it's just, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is know. what this stuff does to your brain. I don't know. I, I used to be more interested in this kind of stuff, but like, uh, um, I don't know. I, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't know what to say. But like, uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, it, it's, it's the funny thing is to me is that when I read a lot of it too, like it's not. It doesn't. It doesn't scan as like wrong. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I got a militarized party and whatnot. Like it. Mm-hmm. Like for some reason, it's just like it all. It all kind of tracks for me. I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And I have to kind of like take a step back and go, no, Donald, no, <laughs> or something. Like, don't, <laughs> don't, don't don't fall back into that one. You know, like that kind of stuff. So yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like all that. I, it, it becomes unreadable when it's like more than a paragraph, though. Yeah. Because it ends up being like, you know, you're talking about Canada, and it's like, you know, a paragraph that's like, we must uphold as the first principle, the, you know, like all this, like, you know, like yeah. it, it gets, it gets it, this jargon just, and you're talking about like five guys in Toronto or something. So, you know. Right. Once the, the word Canada appears in a sentence, it sort of like slaps you back into reality. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, where? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so is there any form of human interaction, which isn't inherently coercive? You're basically trying to make someone feel, do, or think a certain thing. This is actually a thought I've had about sort of the, uh, like, but people take this idea of like coercion too far i think i don't think it really it works when you extend it beyond you can't like have it as be, be like a grounding principle you know and yeah. i think this kind of uh this is sort of the, the logic here you know like you you can't intervene in anyone else's life in any kind of way but that's just not how the world works you know yeah yeah, I don't know. I, I used to think that kind of stuff. I went, I, like, you're talking about more of the left wing kind of side of it, I think, maybe. But, like, uh, yeah. Um, I, I went through this as, like, uh, my early 20s and stuff like that, kind of like working through this because I got interested in, you know, all the libertarian stuff. And then it started breaking apart in my head once I started thinking about, like, just, you know, like uh, space, like geography, like, 
okay, well, how do you have cars? Like, how do you, you know, how do you have, like, uh, you know, you're going to need public land to, like, access people's, you know, houses to be able to get police there and all this kind of stuff. And that means you're going to have to have a road system, but the road system, you know, like all that kind of stuff. It started to break apart where I was just like, no, this makes sense. Cause it's just like, you know, there's, there's, there's obviously all sorts of things that the government has to do. So mm-hmm. like it just, and then as you do that, you start to, you know, you're like, okay, well, if they need transportation systems to get like the police places and all this kind of stuff that implies government control over large of how the economy is structured in a lot of ways, because you know, like if the government is building all the infrastructure or at least a good chunk of it of determining where, you know, like roads go and all that stuff, it means it's basically planning cities and all this kind of stuff, right? Like it's like, I don't know. So the the idea that it's like coercive or something like that, it gets pretty silly after you're like, okay, well, yeah, we shouldn't be coercive, but the government should plan the infrastructure of transportation for everyone or something, like you know, like, yeah. I don't know. So yeah. Yeah. That, that's a sort of a similar trajectory I've gone with thinking about politics is uh, i don't know you can't you just can't really get to some sort of pure theoretical like grounding for any of this stuff like at, at a certain point it's just it's reality is messy and you just have to do what is the most sensible reasonable thing and you're not really going to be able to like boil everything down to a small number of principles and then you just kind of never violate those principles and just you know what i mean like it, sure. i i feel like that doesn't really a it's not necessary like there's been so many different kinds of political formations and and whatnot that just are incoherent on their face but they just stand the test of time so it's like why does that why is that kind of uh elevate it to the status sure. that it takes for uh you know nerds like yeah. this you know what i mean mm-hmm. like yeah so like all that kind of stuff it just seems sort of unnecessary to even consider too hard sure yeah okay uh next question hey tom and don i just saw someone on twitter with the username fund abortions not police and was wondering what you guys think about this new movement to get planned parenthood planned parenthood back in touch with its founding mission um uh, i don't know I, I, was his founding mission like eugenics and eliminating oh, black yeah. people and stuff? I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, you're, you, I don't know. You, you always have like, what's your what's your take on this whole? Did you see the Texas law and all that stuff? I guess we I've of heard of it, but I heard of it like through comedy podcasts. So it's like I don't really know <laughs> what the actual okay. deal is. Sure. Yeah. They yeah. had some website where you could like report people and people would be able to sue each other over it or something. It yeah, pretty, like they, they're dumb. doing. They're doing like a. They're, they're doing it in kind of a silly way where it's like, I mean, they're doing it, you know, it, it's, uh, they're trying to make it so that if someone breaks the law of getting an abortion after like, I think it's like, I think it's basically like six weeks or something like that. Um, they said that like, uh, you can, you can basically like sue someone to enforce it kind of thing. That's the way it works. And it's up to $10,000 or something like that. And, uh, because the idea is if it's through certain types of courts, and it's not the government doing it directly because it technically it's like people suing each other so that it can't get struck down as unconstitutional. That's the oh. theory. And, <laughs> okay. uh, and, and what happened was it went to the ban, went to the Supreme court and the Supreme court declined to uh, stop it from going into place right away. And uh, which is basically like, it, it's like half-assed overturning Roe v. Wade kind of thing. Like it's like, it's not, it's mm-hmm. not like a direct thing, but it's like, you know, like a very, you know, anyways, and, uh, um, you know, at the end of the day, if you look at like the polls in the United States, uh, nationwide or something like that, you know, like the vast majority of people, uh, would not want this kind of law you know, on the books in, in the United States kind of thing, right? Like they're like the number of people that are like pro-life down the line of not wanting it to be legal for the average woman and stuff like that, uh, is probably like less than 30% or something like that. Maybe, 30 40 percent or something like that but like you know like it's not so anyways it's just a um so i don't know i i uh i i don't think and it's it's, but you know i mean just the way things are set up and stuff like that and the way that those record is and stuff so but like uh yeah i mean i'm not going to be the one that you know again it's one of those things where i'm not like you know super well versed or whatever on american portion law or something but like uh um yeah i don't know i uh i don't think it's a good law that doesn't seem uh, even like the the people that I know who are pro-life and stuff don't seem particularly excited about it because of how badly formulated it is and stuff like that, even though yeah, it theoretically seems, it's like a it seems pretty victory bad. for them. Yeah. So, 
I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't have strong opinions about abortion stuff. Really, I feel like uh, people who act like it's some fundamental health care thing that you like. If you don't have it, you're gonna die. It's pretty hyperbolic. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I get what you mean. But uh, yeah, I, but I, also I, like yeah. people free. Uh, like, I I also don't think it's murder. Like, I think yeah. people who go that. I I understand the. If you do believe that, I understand taking it very seriously and everything, but it doesn't seem like people, by and large, who are against, like, abortions and stuff, actually treat it like there's some insane genocide going on, you know? So that seems kind of, like, in bad faith. So it's like, clearly, most of you people understand that this is different from murder, so can we treat it, like, as the way that we actually think about it, you know, instead of, like, just going crazy on both sides? I don't know. Yeah, I get what you mean. I I, I can get if I, I can kind of get like the whole idea of like people feeling like it, if it's it's being uh, made illegal that like somehow it is basically like a, an affront to women kind of thing, like a it basically like an insult to their independence and stuff. I kind of yeah. get that, you know. I get that, but like sure. uh, um, I also, I mean, it also feels just like pretty sad. Uh, state of affairs if people are crowdfunding abortions kind of thing i don't know that's just like i don't know that's it seems like a pretty low i don't know like that's <laughs> i don't know i i feel like uh i don't know it's it, 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 things have gotten pretty bad if that's the the situation kind of thing but i guess americans crowdfund all sorts of health stuff so <laughs> yeah it's not that, it's that's not, our health system now <laughs> yeah so go for um, it yeah Mm-hmm. Although it's not, yeah. So, anyways, I'm not. Gonna yeah, I, I, I guess I just find it very hard to be sympathetic to any of the like actual uh, like movements or whatever around it. Like, it, I kind of feel like it's easy to uh, like if if you just like isolate your your own opinion about it, it's pretty easy to have a kind of a reasonable stance on it. But as soon as you talk to somebody else about it, it just gets into crazy land pretty quick. So it's yeah. just one of these things that it's like, I don't know, you guys sort this out. You clearly feel much strong, you know, more strongly about this than I do about all the ins and outs. So like whatever yeah. you guys decide, whatever, yeah. it's fine with me. That's, I'm that's, not I'm not planning yeah. on getting an abortion anytime soon. So it's really not anything I care about. Yeah, yeah. Well, I usually say that like what would happen is there'd be a women's parliament, which would decide this kind of thing. And I would, yeah. I would just defer to the women's parliament, whatever the women's parliament. If the majority of them said that there should be this or that restriction or a non-restriction or whatever, then I'll just agree with that because, uh, I don't know, I'm not like, you know, I don't know. If it can't, if it did come down to me, that'd be very weird. So, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't really feel like it's solely a women's issue, but um, I, I do think like it's much more of a woman's issue than it is like a, a men's thing. But I also don't like really feel the whole like men have no say in this kind of thing makes any sense like that's that's just not a good tack to take on things you know because it's sure. like uh so if we're saying that only things that affect you personally you have a a right to have an opinion about them it's like that that's not a good uh like logic to pursue yeah it's get it gets back into the coversion kind of stuff i think and, uh, yeah and get in weird places with it so. yeah because like men have like daughters and stuff and women that they care about in their lives and stuff like i feel like that is okay to have opinions about things that affect women even if you're not one you know sure. i don't know then it, that kind of also enters like okay so every minority group then essentially would just get locked out like they would get to decide little things for themselves but then everything else would just not really be up to them i don't know it's just a weird uh, approach to things sure okay uh let's let's move on so someone's asking should i take a good job in a decent place or should i hold out for a not quite as good job in my dream location in my home state that may not even be hiring um uh uh, an okay sorry was it an okay job not as good job in the dream place yeah so good job in a decent place or holding out for a not quite as good job in a dream location in their home state, but they may not even be hiring. Hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, there's a lot more factors, obviously, than we know. But I would say that you could probably figure something out if it's not, you know, if it's not a perfect match of a job, then it, you could probably figure something out. Now, I'm assuming that maybe this is like a smaller location or something like that. I'm not sure. Because if mm. it's like a big city or something like that, then you'll probably be able to find something, at least to bridge you over or something. So sure, yeah, um, that's a good. I point. know, I know that like there's lots of places where you just send out like hundreds of resumes and no one's hiring and stuff. But but like uh, I don't know, it sounds like they're not in that exact situation. So um, yeah, 
Yeah, good job in a decent place sounds like a pretty good deal. That would be hard yeah. for me to pass up, uh, especially because that buys you options later. Sure. Like maybe you take that now and then you keep an eye out for that other thing. And if that becomes available, then then you have a, a plan B, right, that you've already sure. been doing. So yeah, that makes sense to me. But yeah, like you said, there's a lot of factors here that kind of change it right like so sure. dream location what exactly does that entail like why is that so much better than the decent place you know to me uh i can't think of a place that would be so amazing to live at that it would kind of supersede good job in a decent place you know sure but if there's something there that is just like life-changingly good uh that sort of tilts things more in that in that direction and then yeah. like you were talking about what are your alternatives if if that initial uh, not quite as good job falls through. Like, is it just or nothing? I, I wouldn't risk that. It, you know, you have to kind of weigh the, the risk reward here. Mm -hmm. uh, so the next question is, should I move to Arizona? Um, I don't know. That it's one, That's one of like the big, like Arizona's population has been going up a lot recently, hasn't it? A lot of like uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. From people running away from California, I guess. Is that the thing? I don't know. I, I think, probably I think it's like a, a lot of people flight. are doing that. So I think it's like a white flight state, and then uh, and also like on combined with that, uh, people moving because you know of the boom itself, kind of thing. It's like compounding. Yeah. And uh, um, I don't know. Uh, for me, you got like scorpions and stuff down there. I don't. I don't like that. I don't. Right. Like scorpions, and I don't like the the frying sun. Just like you know. Yeah, that's that's like, my thing. It's just too damn hot. I, yeah. I could not deal with that. And it's not like that's going to get better anytime soon. So yeah, exactly. You're, you're kind of setting yourself up for something, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, it depends. Also, I mean, if you're going to have a good job and uh, be making a lot of money, and you can just like blast the air conditioning all the time and not go outside ever, and just thousand your quarantine yourself, then like that might be not okay. So you know. Yeah, if there's just, a reason to do that in Arizona versus other places, yeah. then maybe, yeah. Sure. Or maybe you're really passionate about protecting the value of American labor and you want to police the borders, you know? Sure. Yeah, Protect exactly. American workers from, mm -hmm. from all that kind of stuff. Then, yeah, maybe yeah. maybe it's worth it. For sure. Uh, all right. <laughs> do you guys reckon that gritty prestige TV is played out? And if so, what style of TV show is destined to replace it? Might we see the return of variety shows or dubious sitcoms like The Flying Nun and My Mother is a Car? <laughs> I used to watch The Flying Nun a lot and those kind of things. I mean, or, or not a lot, but like, you know, I would watch it when it was on. I, w I would watch uh, um, Get Smart. Um, a lot of those I've, like... 60s. I haven't seen any of these. Okay. Get Happy Smart Days was the, the one, one I, I got to see. Get Smart was the one where the guy had was like a secret agent, but it was like uh, sort of like Mel Brooks kind of thing. Like it was like... Right. It was like it was like a secret agent, but just like he would, it was just all goofy stuff. Like they would have, uh, they would have like um, he had like a, a telephone phone, a, a shoe. Well, like it was like just anyways, he would he would talk into, but it was like this big dialer phone kind of thing, and anyways, just stuff like that. And yeah, I remember they made like a, a Steve Carell movie yeah, based on did. it, yeah. and my uh, my grandparents in Finland were super excited about that. Oh, really? Because they yeah, loved yeah, the I, show. So the show is good. Yeah, the show they were funny. really about that. A lot of, yeah, that's how I dream of genie. That. All those ones. Yeah, um, yeah, a lot of the old time. That's because you know when I was growing up in the eighties and stuff, that that was like. You know, most channels were that most of the time, like just reruns and stuff. And then you would have like, you know, your block at night of like the new stuff. But then there'd be most of the channels would just be like, you know, the Avengers and other 60s, you know, the Prisoner and whatever. And all those like just random 60s shows and 70s shows and stuff. So the old Batman, stuff like that. Yeah. So all of it, the same kind of corny, absurdist humor. So that was helpful for me. So, yeah. Mm hmm. Um, um, well, yeah. so the question was <laughs> <laughs> uh, about gritty prestige TV. Is it played out and what's going to replace it? Um, I don't know. People seem to be, uh, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't think that it's, uh, I, 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 to me, a lot of the gritty kind of TV and stuff never really seemed completely gritty. Like it always seemed like kind of a bit corny and a bit silly and stuff. Um, you know, like Mad Men has a lot of stuff and it's just, that's just goofy and stuff or like, yeah. you know, or like, uh. The Sopranos had a lot of cheesy kind of jokes and stuff in it that were funny and uh, all that kind of stuff and uh, um, yeah and yeah and The Wire and stuff all of them so uh, I don't know I feel like uh, I do feel like maybe it goes in phases where like yeah you just have these different trends that kind of come up but 
I don't know. There's a lot of like goofy, corny kind of TV other than that still. Like if you look at like what the main things that people watch are, it's probably still like cop shows and stuff like that, you know? So Yeah, like, and I there's mean, all like, these like you know, celebrities dancing and yeah, with the judge panels and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, that's just basically variety shows that are turned into contests and stuff, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I, th- I think like, I don't know, I, I read this take on the, the style of TV that, Maybe has some validity to it. I don't know if it's like the one and only reason it exists or something. But I think the idea of this like gritty like anti-hero thing being kind of like uh, sort of propagandistic in a, in the sense that like justifying uh, doing doing the bad thing to catch the bad guys kind of a stuff. You know, I feel like that's a lot of the ways that we justify our foreign policy and even like uh, domestic policies in, in a lot of cases, you know, like with the police sure. or, or um, I, I think there's a lot of like anti-welfare type sentiment that sort of follows that logic in a way. Like it's like we, we can't support people who don't contribute. So we have to take it away from everybody sort of a thing that sort of feels the same kind of thing. Like have to make the hard decision to do, you know, that seems evil, but it's actually for good sort of a thing. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of that in, uh, depending on, uh, you know, the show and stuff. But I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to know. It's hard to know what, like, uh, the future is going to be on this kind of stuff. I feel like there's tons and tons of, uh, like, absurdist humor stuff out there or, like, variety show kind of stuff or whatever. Like, yeah. There's tons of stuff out there. Um, you know, like, there's those Tim Robinson shows that uh, are pretty much, like, what, you know, just uh, absurdist sketch humor kind of stuff. There's... Uh, I don't know, lots of adult swim shows and stuff like that related to that. And uh, I don't know, Netflix is investing in a lot of that kind of stuff too. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, the, and, the, the point I was going to make about like uh, the absurdist stuff, I feel like that has uh, welded itself to like woke liberal sure, yeah. ideas and stuff. Like to be funny and, and woke is just to be kind of absurdist and wacky. Like it's, yeah. it's not like you, you don't really want to comment on things in any ways that can offend somebody. So it's like it sure. leaves a lot of things off the table to select like to have consistent material you just have to be like oh i'm dressed up as a hot dog and blah 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 you know that yeah whatever yeah. that show is uh so i i think we might be i don't know i, I think we might transition more towards that away from because i think like uh if if the u.s empire is in decline or whatever there's going to be less need or less uh, impulse to justify a lot of adventurism if we kind of take that idea of gritty prestige tv as propaganda type thing yeah um if if that loses a lot of the necessity for it then i think uh what what we will transition to is more like this um i i see like the the whole woke thing is being a kind of like um a form of like cultural chauvinism type deal like if you know along the same lines of like if we're kind of taking this idea of it as propaganda like a lot of it is like uh I think it's to to try to make um, make people feel like they have to change the way they think about things to be morally correct. You know, like okay. it's a very moralistic type thing. Sure. So it's like people who don't think this way because they weren't uh, like encultured into it are backwards, right? Whether mm-hmm. it, you know, and I don't think it's implicitly uh, you know xenophobic or whatever, but I, I think it sort of carries that almost just as a logical following. You know, mm-hmm. it's, I, it's really directed at domestic people right i guess it's yeah. focused at like the the right wing in the country the cultural right wing but there's sort of like an obvious implication there like well if if the people who live in the same country and share so much of the culture except for these certain things are just beyond the pale in terms of being morally evil well what about people who live in a totally different place that just don't like they just think about things completely differently you know where yeah. these are they don't think about these issues this way at all then i think if you're honest with yourself, you have to say like, well, then they're even further, you know? Sure. So there's sort of almost like a nationalistic type thing. So if, if empire is, is uh fading in the U S uh, then it will become more like the UK, you know, like, I think that's sort of our future where we're kind of like a more, more uh, insular, you know, in the way we look okay. at the world. Sure. So I think that that maybe we'll see more, uh, more of that type of deal. Absurdist mm-hmm. woke stuff. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's good news for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Me too. I love that stuff. It's my favorite kind of comedy. Well, go, uh, go check out of it. Sure. Okay. What is something that normal people do all the time that you just can't? Hmm. 
I, I feel like it's not anything specific, but it's just doing stuff all the time just is not, I, I just can't keep up. I don't know. I, I, I can do like one thing a day or something, but like some people, they just like pack their days full of all these different activities and stuff, or like they just, they can go from work to hanging out to like doing some hobby or something, like all, all this stuff. It's like, I, I can do like two of those things, you know? Uh, yeah. So I, I, I find myself limited in that way. Yeah, I'm similar to that kind of stuff. It's amazing looking back in, when I, in the past when I would be able to do more, um, just being surprised at, you know, that kind of stuff being like, oh, yeah, like, uh, I don't know. Like, I, I always think to myself, like, uh, you know, in, in first year university, now I didn't I didn't actually do this, but like, you know, in your schedule, you're supposed to have like 15 hours of classes a week, right? Like, so it's like, and they're broken up into one hour, three one hour things, whatever, right? So it's like, it's uh, every day you would have like three one hour things at different times, five of them throughout your week, whatever kind of thing. Right. So um, uh, just stuff like that. And in addition to like doing work or having a job and all this kind of stuff, or whatever. Right. So uh, to me, that just seems like crazy now or something like that. Like yeah, I could never do something like, that. like just sit there and focus for 15 hours a week on classes and stuff. I don't know. I would I would not be good at that. And uh, um, I don't know. And uh, so full time job, you know, all, already out of the picture, basically. But like. Uh, um and uh yeah i don't know I, that's the main thing i think probably for me is that i can't hold down a job i don't know like it it just seems insane to me in like a lot of ways kind of thing i don't know so yeah yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe i'm a little bit like that too i, I kind of uh don't work for like a nine to five type deal and that that sure. seems pretty intense to me yeah. the the studying type thing like at college i i kind of like uh overloaded my schedule but i felt like that was good like i i could handle it and i also felt like i could have done more like i was actually remember yeah. being disappointed that i wasn't allowed to take more classes than i was already taking yeah, uh, yeah. i think I like for, at least for me it's different because um that all sort of seems like one thing you know so sure. like this i think this is like very psychological for me like it's just like all the different if it's a bunch of different types of things that kind of overwhelms me and, and really like fatigues me but if it's all just like one thing i can do it really intensely and that's fine like that doesn't really wear me out yeah. it's when it's a mm -hmm. bunch of different things I, I think it i have to like prep myself or something and that just uh if, it, if i have to change gears so often it's just a lot yeah I think once I get to almost like an hour or just a bit or more than that of anything, I start to like get antsy and like start to almost like flip out kind of thing. I'm like, oh man, I got to get it myself out of this situation or something like that. So I found that when I was taking my master's a few years ago, uh, where I would just be in class and just kind of sitting there. And then all of a sudden I'd be like, I got to get out of here. Like it's not like, a, it's not like, yeah. a, and they're like three hour classes. So it's kind of absurd to only go for the first hour you know, and, uh, of every class and miss half your classes and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. It was not like a well thought out situation, even though I ended up doing okay, but just, you know, I could do okay because I could write okay and stuff, you know? So it's like, it, it, you know, you get through it kind of thing, but like, uh, it wasn't well thought out for me to do that. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I tried though. I did my best. So yeah. yeah, you made it through in the end, you know? Yeah. So, but I always look that stuff up. I'm like, oh, maybe I could take a class on this or that or whatever. And then I'm like, I remember, I'm like, wait a minute. So I'm trying to like think of like what components of it I could do kind of thing. Like, you know, if it was like you can download the lectures and watch them and then you submit your assignments and stuff like that or whatever. Um, and there's not like, it's not me sitting on Zoom for three hours or something like that. That would just be hell kind of thing. But if it was like you can kind of watch it your own leisure on YouTube or something. Um, so I might try to do some stuff like that just around different interests of mine and stuff, but like, uh, I don't know, we'll see, but I feel like if it's just like a half-assed kind of thing where it's like, just, you don't pay anything or don't have any assignments that are like actual real kind of things that contribute to something, then, uh, I won't do it kind of thing. I don't know. So yeah. again, it was, it's one of those things where at the end of the day, if I don't have the discipline to do that, then it's like, well, anything's not going to work out, but like, I don't know. I'll try, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll figure it out. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. The next question are the horse ivermectin people a bunch of idiots, or is it overly harsh to judge them that way? Seeing as doctors often gate gatekeep essential medications because they distrust patients and dismiss their concerns. So what do you think about this? I think they are idiots, um, but I think the general, like, I, I don't know, I, I find myself in a position where, like, I think... Uh, I. I think like the vaccine cheerleaders are uh, are also idiots. Like I, I think that there's a lot of reasons to distrust like these pharma companies and 
like all, all the numbers around effectiveness have like they're phrased in particular ways to be misleading to make you think they're like these magical things that just cure everything and all that and that's becoming more and more apparent you know and uh, i don't know it's just like a personal annoyance of mine that like there's a uh, there's always going to be a group of people that are like skeptical of these things and kind of like look into it on their own. And the majority of those people will come to pretty dumb conclusions because they're just doing like personal research with no real background in this. They don't really know how to navigate sure. this stuff. And a lot of them have like weird motivations, you know, political motivations or whatever. To They find something that they want to hear and then they just say that that's the truth, you know. Yeah. But um, there's also people that like look into it, uh, kind of see through the stuff that the CDC or whatever is saying. And are like, huh, these things aren't really what they're what people are thinking they are. And then, you know, they're kind of judged the same way as like uh, like the horse ivermectin type folks, you know, or like yeah. anti-vaxxers or whatever, which I think is really unfair. But then once the news starts to kind of. Uh oh! Turns out there's all these uh you know breakthrough infections. Uh oh, the, the vaccine's a little leaky. Then uh, that becomes like the uh, mainstream like consensus for all the you know I believe the science type folks. And then uh, you know it was then that's like they act as if that's what they believed all along and all this kind of stuff. And uh, there's no you know there's no like reconciliation with the people that were kind of on that track the whole time anyways you know that that kind of yeah. annoys me there's sort of like uh we were right to be wrong and you were wrong to be right type of mentality where it's like sure you know we're all supposed to be thinking this at this time and then if if the uh if, if they send down the message and change change what's uh what we're supposed to believe then that's what we go with but if you're if you're out of step with that even if it's based on facts then that's like consider just uh you know the wrong thing to do so anyway that's that's just kind of a personal annoyance of mine um yeah i i but yeah like i said i do think the ivermectin stuff is pretty dumb i feel like if you were saying oh it's just the flu it's got a low mortality rate like okay uh you can kind of take that track but then why are you looking for all these like medications and stuff for it right like if you're not yeah, worried yeah. about it then just don't be worried about it and uh you know that that is a consistent position that's okay I, I and for a lot of people i think that honestly it kind of makes sense you know if you're like a healthy young person then you probably don't need to be freaking out about it yeah uh, but uh i i wouldn't say it's like overly harsh to if people are being stupid you sh you can call them stupid you know it's not it's not yeah bad. yeah i don't i don't well yeah i think at the end of the day really any sort of like insult or criticism or joke about someone else is probably not good anyways like it's, it's just one of the sad facts of reality that we probably shouldn't be making fun of people all the time and stuff like that even though i do and i do enjoy it it's one of those <laughs> things where you if it, you know i mean if you kind of force that point then there shouldn't be any comedy really or like a lot of it anyways you know what i mean like it's just mm -hmm. you know if you're like well you shouldn't tease that person you're like okay well I get that, but come on. You yeah, know, like yeah. We're not, you know, I was thinking yeah. more in terms of like, how do you personally think about this? Like, you can think it's sure. stupid and, and think people doing this are idiots, but like, yeah, the, the whole like mocking people who are dying of it because they were like skeptical of the vaccine or whatever is, I I, I don't know. It's it's kind of gross. I, 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 I don't know. I think the, the main issue I have with that whole phenomena is just the, the fact that we've we're in a pandemic and now it's become like the liberal like position to mock people who are dying of it. Like <laughs> that just yeah. seems pretty wild because, oh, we've decided, oh, it's the unvaccinated who are dying. Like, oh, OK, I, I so the, all those people now deserve to die. And there's like just thousands and thousands of people who are I, I just don't believe that it's just unvaccinated people who are still getting sick. That that seems yeah. pretty convenient. I don't know. It, I think it's, I mean, I think it's, a lot of it is really funny just because of how it's it's like the most extreme possible uh, conclusions kind of thing that people are coming to kind of thing of yeah. like, it's like a guy, you know, will go on the radio saying, I will never get sick. I will never get sick or something. You know what I mean? And then yeah, yeah. they die like the next day or something like that. That you know, is it's funny. Like, to, it's it's like insane how, quint like the coincidences and stuff. Yeah. And um, people have also found a lot of like... Uh, coincidence kind of things were of like oh not coincidence but like it'll be someone being like my wife died because of this or whatever and stuff and then the next day they're like want to go party or something you know like people that it just really really weird like coincidences and silly things like that kind of thing where it's like i don't know just uh 
I don't know. It's just, it's a weird situation. So I, I get, and it's an extreme situation. So I get like, there, there's going to be jokes and stuff like that. I don't, I don't really have a problem with that. I do have a problem with like the, not problem, but like, I just find it kind of weird. Uh, like at the end of the day, if, if, uh, it's like it's not good that like this is happening. I don't know. You know, like it's it's still like yeah. a social problem. Like it's still like it, it it still says a lot about your society if uh you can't get this under control. I don't know. Like mm-hmm. you know, like uh the fact that we we in both Canada and North, in the United States we have large parts of the population that just aren't going along with the public health regulations and all that kind of stuff. You know, like it's just like I don't know. That's not like a good sign for the future of like wanting. I don't know, even stuff like Medicare for all in the United States or something like that kind of thing. Like you would think at the start, uh, you would think of at the start of the pandemic that like one of the number one issues would have been Medicare for all. You know what I mean? Like through all the way through. Like it could have been a transformative moment for that kind of thing. And instead we're not even, that's not even really talked about as much anymore, right? Like it's just like, it's just, uh, it's completely gone. And instead people are making fun of uh, people dying. So it's like, you know, like it's like a consolation prize kind of thing or something like that for not getting socialism or something like that. It's right. Like, and it, it's also like putting yeah. the, the, the problem isn't that people just have this deep distrust of the government for good reasons. Like they've lied to us about wars. They, they're like always lying to us about all kinds of stuff, right? Like there's very good reasons to be distrustful of the government and of like these health companies and just corporations and whatnot in general, all that kind of stuff. Like that's a very reasonable sentiment very reasonable position to have the fact that some people are kind of dumb and just have these feelings and and uh you know either get swayed by some kind of uh you know talk radio or whatever it is that gets them into this stuff fox news uh, i mean yeah it, it's stupid they are being stupid but the it's not because they didn't listen to you you know that that's what kind of bugs me it's like the idea is that you you're uh the the problem is that people didn't listen to uh to like these people who've been wrong like consistently over yeah. and over again you know so sure. that yeah it, it should be kind of targeting the uh like like you said like the fact that our healthcare system is just a complete joke you know at least in the US yeah. it's a little bit better in Canada but um yeah that that just kind of bugs me i, I don't know it, it's a uh, it's very representative to me of just why i really dislike the left uh they kind of always are conveniently when it when they have complete impotence over something like they just aren't able to influence something then all of a sudden they have the most radical opinions about stuff and all this kind of thing but then when it's something like this where they can like undermine the liberal like the centrist liberal type rhetoric you know they just fall in line and it just, it's over and over again and it really uh it just makes me dislike it i don't know sure i feel like uh you know you got to step up and when when you actually can do something at least rhetorically that's when you have to risk it, not like, oh, and then you fall in with, like, the SNL folks, like, you know, sure. mocking these people. I don't have a moral issue with it. I just think it, it's representative of, like, the a pretty deep uh, flaw. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, anyway. Uh, is Zoomer humor like that because they're over-medicated? I suddenly started finding it very amusing the other day when high as balls on the unscheduled research chemical uh, 4-hydroxy blah, 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 okay bunch of scientific stuff there so some kind of drug um is that it that's that's the whole question or yeah do, is okay. uh, zoomer humor like that because of uh, over medication i mean it, it's probably some kind of factor right yeah i'm not sure what what the difference is the zoomer humor does this mean like tiktok or something like this like weird things like that i don't know like I, i'm not sure i guess this, this yeah. is me i'm just out of touch i don't know i don't know what they mean yeah. Zoomer humor. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not really sure exactly what that would be like either. Because to me, there's like internet humor that young people are into, and it doesn't really seem that different from a lot of other sure. internet humor. There's yeah. a. It doesn't seem like a generational thing, I guess. You know, like I feel like the jokes that you see on like Twitch or TikTok or whatever, a lot of that kind of stuff is very similar to uh, jokes that were around on. I don't know, like game servers, uh, you know, when it was playing Counter-Strike, like that kind of humor. Yeah. It seems very similar. So I, I don't know. Sure. But then again, I, I think the over-medication has been around that long too. So Sure, yeah. Could could be. Yeah. I think it's like a low attention span thing, which is which goes beyond over-medication. You know, that's a, sure. that's just like a, the way we consume media yeah. now is it's getting shorter and shorter. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so let's let's wrap it up here with this question. Does Shadow Donald smoke cigarettes? So what is Shadow Donald? Is this You've mentioned Shadow Donald before, like the or 
you know, from a, the dark dimension or whatever. He's, oh, really? He sometimes writes in. Uh, maybe you didn't come up with it. I, I forget the genesis <laughs> whole bit. But, yeah, there's someone who writes in as Shadow Donald and, like, threatens us. It's like uh, oh, okay. Shadow Donald and something for me. I forget what it is. Yeah. Um, I've never smoked before. I don't know. I, uh, so maybe they I, – I, I assume they would. Yeah. Right. I've, smoke, I've smoked in dreams before. But not, oh, really? Yeah. So that's weird. I think that maybe that's – Maybe uh, that's where it comes from, I don't know, the Shadow Donald. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. I imagine so, that he smokes yeah. like clove cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Hipster Shadow Donald. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Well, yeah, that'll that'll do it, I guess. So, thanks for sending any sure. questions, guys. Always fun. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, if you want a second episode of uh, You Can't Win Every Week, you can subscribe to our Patreon. You'll get that as well as access to our Discord for $5 a month. If you want to send in these questions anonymously, you can do that at our Twitter account. We have a link to the Curious Cat pin there. It's at You Can't Win Pod. Um, and we will answer these at the end of every episode and on our Q&A episodes like this one. So thanks for listening, and we will catch you next week. Thanks, guys. Bye.